Greetings, everyone. This is Dr. Heather Lee, and I'm here with this week's Ghost Town Talks. Again, I want to thank the Henderson Libraries for inviting me to do these talks with you. I hope you're finding them informative, even though they are just covering a brief history of our, um, ha not haunted past, we will talk about haunting later, but a brief history of our ghost towns and history of the state. And this week, I want to talk about um, Ghost Town Talks with Goldfield, Nevada. Now, many of you have heard about Goldfield. It's one of the most common visited, commonly visited areas when you're looking for historical locations. Um, history buffs go there. Like I mentioned earlier, paranormal investigators go there. You're also looking for people who like to just search and experience something from our state's past. Now, this photo is taken from the Florence Mine looking down on the city of Goldfield. You can actually see the hotel and the high school there in the background. Um, so let's get this talk started. Okay, as I mentioned, it's one of the most famous ghost towns and is heavily visited by explorers, history fanatics, families, and seekers of the paranormal. So much of Nevada's history can be learned by studying the history of this living ghost town alone. There's so much, I mean, so many people came to Nevada just to live in Goldfield and experience the boom that it was happening at the time. And this is just going to be a brief look at the history because there's so much history of the town, I can't cover it in just one presentation. So we will take a quick look at one of the largest boom towns during the gold rush. In 1902, word of gold being found in Goldfield reached Tonopah. At that time, Billy Marsh and Henry Stimler immediately went to the area of Goldfield where that gold was discovered. And that resulted in what was gonna be the largest mining rush in Nevada. And this was the largest mining rush since the Comstock rush four years earlier, or I'm sorry, four decades earlier. Um, by 1903, Main Street area was lined with tents and businesses that all started to develop to support the residents living there that were working in the mines. During its boom, Goldfield's population was more than 20,000 people, making it the largest city in the state at the time. By 1905, it was turning into a proper city and so many buildings were going up in the downtown area, including buildings that were constructed of brick and stone, making it more permanent. Much of the downtown area was destroyed by a fire in 1905. And then in 1906, a newspaper had reported that Goldfield had 250 incorporated mining companies, and this was making it one of the largest mining cities in the state. Later in 1906, federal troops had to be called in to help with labor disputes between the industrial workers and the Western Federation of Miners. And this caused a lot of stir. And this is actually listed as one of the major disasters. Goldfield went through two major fire, or three major fires throughout its year and a major flood, some of it which we will talk about later on. But the 1906 calling of the federal troops is also listed as a, one of their major disasters that they had in that town. The town was booming with three railroads, five banks, five newspapers, two mining stock exchanges, four schools, and dozens of saloons. The saloons were the most popular thing to do in the town for people to go to for food and drink. By 1910, mining production drastically stopped and the population slowly dropped to less than only 5,000 residents. Much of the town shortly after was destroyed by a flood in 1913. By 1918, the Goldfield Consolidated Goldfield Consolidated ceased its operations and it just basically killed all mining endeavors in the town. Today, some mines still exist. Um, some are still in operation. I know they're working on boosting some of the operations there. And other mines such as the Florence Mine, which we'll talk about later, is currently being preserved and open for tours. In 1923, a catastrophic fire burned down most of the town and the city just never fully recovered from that. That was almost the end of Goldfield as we knew it back then. The current population is currently only around 250 people. From 1901 to 1940, gold fine mines produced more than $90 million in gold, to, in gold to silver. And basically the ratio from gold to silver was three to one, or yeah, three to one. So it was mostly gold, but there was some silver mined in Goldfield. Okay, one of the most common um, sites to go to is the Goldfield High School. It's one of the historic buildings that is still standing and was not destroyed. Um, back in the day, Goldfield was very luxury, luxurious for its time. Families wanted the best for their children, so they called architect J.B. Randall to come help design the new high school in 1907. This new high school was three stories, equaling 19,656 square feet, and the property featured 12 school classrooms, a huge auditorium, two offices, two bathrooms, four storage rooms, a full-size basketball court, 
an extra large attic, which they believe was used for um, additional storage. And it had a capacity to hold up to 450 people, including students and faculty together. As the mining operations began to decline in this town, families moved out of Goldfield. And then by 18, 1918, the other three schools in town were closed and all grade levels were relocated to the high school. In 1947, grades nine through 12 were bused to Tonopah and the lower, oh my goodness, I just noticed a typo, I'm so sorry, <laughs> lower grades remained on the ground floor of the classroom until 1953. The school was abandoned shortly after due to an increasingly weak foundation of the building. Um, over the years, renovation projects have got underway and they're still con continuing renovation projects. The high school is one of the few historic landmarks in Goldfield that was not destroyed by the fires. The other structure was the Goldfield Hotel. It was constructed on a site where two previous wooden hotels stood. Both of these hotels were burned in previous major fires. The hotel was designed by Curtis and Hol Holsworth. In June 1908, the hotel opened and the owner staged a lavish grand opening featuring lively entertainment and a formal dinner area. At the time, the hotel featured four stories. It had gray granite stones from Rockland, California. Public rooms were on the Massive public rooms were found on the main floor. Guest rooms were located on the upper floors, even though there were some guest rooms on the main floor. There were 150 sleeping rooms and 45 suites with bathrooms. The entry porch had lavish pillars for the day. It had fireproofing and fire escapes. The hotel had running water. On-site power plant was there producing steam heat for the hotel. It had a mahogany reception desk, as well as the halls were lined with mahogany paneling had a switchboard and public telephone booth. It had one of the fastest elevators in Nevada, which ran 300 feet per minute, had a separate entrance for men and women to the dining room. The women entered through the lobby, the men entered through the saloon, and this was because women were not allowed in the saloon at the time. And it also had cr crystal electric lights in the lobby. With so many historic buildings being destroyed by natural elements and disasters, because of this, it is so important that we cherish the buildings that are still standing today. Two of the historic buildings in Goldfield that I wanted to point out, they're right next to each other, and that is the Nixon Building and the John S. Cook Bank Building. Both buildings have been saved and are currently being preserved to allow to help preserve their natural beauty, beauty and architecture of them to help them stand out in the city and also to be enjoyed by future generations. In this, you can see the photos of the Cook Building as well as the Goldfields Consolidated Company. Okay, the Florence Mine, I've mentioned this before. I had the luxury about two years ago to actually tour this and do a paranormal investigation. We were the first team to go in and do a parano paranormal investigation of the mine. The mine was founded in 1902 by Charlie Taylor. Tom Lockhart and his partner, A.D. Parker, bought half interest in the mine, eventually gaining full control of mining operations. In 1923, Martin Duffy leased part of the mine and he eventually took over ownership with his wife, Ruth, Ruth Grove. And the mine is not in operation today, but tours are available. And later on, I will give you guys information if you wanna call up to John Arick, who's the owner of the mine, to get a tour. As you can see here, you see the hoist house in the photos, as well as an old newspaper from the day, from the Goldfield Daily, I think it's the Goldfield Daily Times, and um, a back, a further back photo that shows you the overview of the mine. This is a gorgeous property. And if you ever get a chance to get up there, do reach out to John. Um, he's a great guy. His family and his son actually offer the tours. You can see the mine, learn about mine operations, and he's doing a fantastic job preserving this place. This is an awesome, awesome piece of history that is just something you don't wanna miss if you're up in the Goldfield area. Okay. The Goldfield Cemetery, it's a popular place for people to go. Um, it's divided into four sections, or not four sections, different sections. There's the Catholic section. It's a whole bunch of different sections throughout there. I can't even name them all. And they are all full of stories. It's a common location for people to go and visit and because they can learn about the residents who once lived there when the town was booming. All the tombstones have different stories. You can see who's there. Some of them even list the life they led, you know, just little stories found on the tombstones. While you also have some crudely made tombstones or like just the simple crosses that you can see here. Goldfield Cemetery is known as the last dig. Um, this is because it's home. And it's also an interesting fact is it's home to more graves than the current residents. Um, because before its current location, the cemetery was located near downtown Goldfield over near the station. And because um, the council and the city people didn't want 
didn't think that, you know, stepping off the train into a cemetery was something you, you, they really wanted for their town, they ended up relocating the cemetery. And this was done by a team of grave diggers known as the official ghouls who only worked at night relocating the cemetery. Um, as I had mentioned today, you can see some crudely made tombstones, including the one that I still have yet to find there, but I've seen photos of it. It says the man died of li eating library paste. Um, true story, I know people who've seen it and I've just been trying to find it myself, but the cemetery is so massive that it takes forever to get through the whole, whole area. Okay, former famous residents. Throughout the years, Goldfield was home to some famous residents. Some famous residents and visitors to the town include Virgil and Wyatt Earp. Virgil moved to Goldfield and that is where he had passed away. He actually was also um, a deputy sheriff of the area in his later days. Wyatt came to visit Virgil often and he even worked as, I think it was a bouncer at one of the local saloons. George Wingfield owned property such as the Goldfield Hotel and also several mines throughout the area. Death Valley Scouty, Scotty, sorry. Jack Dempsey, and then Governor and late U.S. Senator Tasker Odie. In 1906, the town hosted the lightweight champion boxing championship match. The match was between Joe Gans and Oscar Badling Nelson. You can see photos of some of these famous residents on this page as well. Okay, biggest question I get is Goldfield Haunted. Personally, from my experiences, I would say yes. Um, there are many rumors of former residents still haunting Goldfield. So I'm gonna tell you some of the stories. It's not all of the stories because the stories as far as if Goldfield is haunted are near endless. But I'm gonna show you some of the famous stories as well as an experience I had, a couple experiences I had while there. And then you guys can decide for yourself. Okay, the Goldfield Hotel. It's believed that George Wingfield still haunts the house of the hotel as there's many reports of two children playing pranks on the guests in the lobby. There are other reports of strange noises, sensations of being watched, objects moving. Room 109 also has a tendency to create technological issues. So like if you go in the room and try to use a camera or a digital voice recorder, they just stop working for no reason. I have not investigated the Goldfield Hotel on the inside, but I have been on the outside, and I have talked to several people who claim that these activities do occur. The John S. Cook Building. There are reports that the building is haunted by Claudia, she is a female who worked in the building and mysteriously fell down the stairwell after threatening to blackmail one of the men in the building for his business affairs. There's reports of seeing Claudia, hearing her, and a whole bunch of other things. And going back to the Golden Hotel, Wingfield's mistress was also reportedly to, and her child were to have died in the area. They're not sure if they died in Goldfield or somewhere else or where their bodies ended up. And there's also reports that she didn't die there and that she lived ha out her life. So there's kind of conflicting things there. So I don't always like to mention it. But again, I'm leaving this up to you guys to decide if you think that Goldfield is haunted. And there's reports that you hear her, her crying or the baby crying in the hotel. The Goldfield High School. High School. I have heard many reports of activity and intel intelligent interaction with spirits. Um, they all seem to be the same reports. They hear footsteps, um, they, which that could be residual, but they just hear, you know, voices. I know a group who went there and played um, with a beach ball with what they believe to be a little girl. Many stories around why the Goldfield High School is haunted. Now, the Florence Mine. When I was there doing the investigation, we heard sounds of men talking in the hoist house. And when we went into the hoist house, it stopped. And then if you see in the top photo, there's an entrance to a shaft at the Florence Mine. We actually went into that mine where it was collapsed. And at the end, we experienced, we felt heavy emotion. I personally felt like I was being crushed, which would be the sensation that the men felt when the mine collapsed on them. So just full emotion in that shaft, but other than that, no real activity. And then one of our members went down into the actual large mine Part of it and he experienced some interesting things um, just how he felt and noises that they heard while they were down there now also in the photo of the building at the bottom not it's not in that photo but that photo that building we um, when we were looking at the goldfield hall because this is right across the street and just kind of down the road a little bit we um nobody was in the building at the time which i have confirmation on from someone who was there and we have photos of someone looking out, or not even a full body, just more like a shadow or an outline of someone looking out the window at us. And it's just real interesting. And we could see activity in there. 
even knowing nobody was in the house. But because we weren't in the house, we can't have full confirmation if that is real or not. So that's why we don't use that as evidence. So anyway, um, that's just some of the common locations which are believed to be haunted. There are so many other claims of paranormal activity in the town. I could go on and on about the different activity and experiences, um, but it, it's kind of hard to believe that Goldfield won't be haunted with so much history. I'm sure a lot of the spirits don't wanna leave. Okay, so visiting Goldfield, you wanna make sure you visit the Goldfields. Um, Visitor Center has all the information you need to visit. The website's right there. When you're in Goldfield, you can walk down the street. That's a photo at the top of the fire station. And around the fire station, they actually have antique um, fire trucks that they used to use throughout the year. So you can go there and it's almost like an outdoor museum. You can see everything. Make sure you stop by the Chamber of Commerce. It's in downtown. It's actually just a little bit up the street from that fire station. You can call the Florence Mine. John Ulrich is the owner and there's his phone number. Goldfield Days happens annually in August. I'm not sure, I know last year they canceled, but I'm not sure if they're hosting it this year or not, but that's something that you could always Google and find out. Goldfield is full of museums, such as the Goldfield Historic Bullfrog or Goldfield Railroad Yard. Dining, you have the Dinky Diner, Santa Fe Saloon, and Vanderford's Gold Strike and Ice Cream Parlor. And then also don't forget to visit the church of the last, the car forest of the last church. And that is in the photo at the bottom, and that is acres and acres of almost like a car art sculpture type of thing where just cars were driven into the ground and graffiti artists were allowed to come out and decorate all the different cars. It is a real interesting place to go explore. Okay, resources to learn more about Goldfield. Like I said, this was just a brief history, not touching on everything. Um, you can go to the Goldfield Historical Society. Western Mining History has information. Esmeralda County, um, Nevada's website has information. And then also Real Haunts Ghost Town by Motion Picture Video. It is coming out in May 2021. That one is, um, I talked about that last month about that. That is a documentary that my family was asked to participate in. And we went around town. Um, we went to Goldfield, Gold Point, and Nelson doing some filming. And they're also featuring McCall School of Mines and the Clark County Museum in the documentary. For those of you interested, if you want, we are a viewing party at um, the School of Mines as a fundraiser for the museum there. And it's anywhere from 10 to $35, depending on if you just want to come watch the documentary, have a haunted ghost tour, or go on an investigation with us. We are doing all of that on May 15th. And I'll give you my website later on. And also, um, I'll give you McCaw School of Mines website later on where you can get more details on how to get tickets for the so if you guys haven't written all this down, just take a screenshot or just come back and watch the replay at the websites that you need. Okay, books available at some libraries about gold. Okay, you have Goldfield, The Last Gold Rush on the Western Frontier, Goldfield, Early History and Water Supply, The Glory Days in Goldfield, and Goldfield, of Nevada. Okay. Henderson Area Ghost Town Educational Opportunities. The Clark County Museum mentioned, they are open daily. And then the McCaw School of Mines, they are open Monday through, or they, sorry, they are only open on the first Saturday of every month from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. And then again, like I mentioned, you can go to Facebook, look up McCaw School of Mines, or you can look up my Facebook page to get information about that upcoming event. Okay, next presentation, I'm going to be doing it last Friday of May. Gold Point, Nevada is a hidden ghost town that is one of the most well-preserved ghost towns in the state of Nevada that I have found. Um, it's next to Nelson, which I'll be covering in June. Um, the presentation will showcase how the town was founded and how it was saved, as well as, again, some paranormal experiences we had there while filming um, Real Haunts Ghost Towns. Just a little bit about me. I have been researching paranormal activity for more than 30 years, including the history behind why locations might be haunted. I am a regional director for Warren Legacy Foundation of Paranormal Research. I'm on the board of director of Ghost Education 101 and a regular contributor to the Real Paranormal Magazine. I hold a doctor of physical humanistic science specializing in paranormal science. You can find my family, myself and my family, which is my paranormal team, do it as a family, Featured in the upcoming documentary, Real Haunts Ghost Towns, motion picture video, spring 2021. 
Here's where you can find me. If you go to the at Dr. Heather Lee, that is the event page is for our event at Wakanda School of Mines in May. So again, I want to thank everyone for joining us. Thank you again, Henderson Libraries, for having me. This was fantastic. I love sharing information about different ghost towns throughout the area. And make sure to join us next month for Ghost Town or Ghost Town Talks, Gold Point, Nevada. Talk to you guys later.